Hey guys, it's me, your teacher um, here again, um, working in front of the computer, as you can plainly see in my the reflection on my glasses, um, working on the material for this week. And I thought that I would um, do a, a short video introduction this week because the, the topic uh, for this week is really, really important. Um, as the author of the book points out, um, validity, which is this week's topic, is probably the most important concept um, in the area of assessment and evaluation. And, and speaking of which, I, I was um, the, the, this weekend I was having dinner with my lovely wife, and we were sitting at dinner, and um, she's a second grade teacher, and we were talking about assessment. That's, that's unfortunately what uh, you, you get with a person like me. You get a, a, a dinner out, an evening out, and uh, discussions about things like assessment. But um, we were talking about assessment, and something came up that, it, that I have not addressed earlier in, in the notes or the information, but it was addressed in the book, and I just wanted to kind of remind you of, of the importance of this, and, and that is that generally assessments are, are, are given by teachers in classroom situations for, for one of two reasons. They, they can be formative assessments where the results are used to help um, improve the overall quality of the instructional experiences and to, to help identify where students are at so that individual students' needs can be met, perhaps through, through different ways. Um, but, but primarily, the, the data are used to help inform the continued development of effective instruction because it's really good practice in form for teachers to assume that if students are having a difficult time learning something that there's probably something that can be done instructionally to help uh, to help that or mitigate that in some way. Um, unfortunately, teachers primarily tend to use formal assessments uh, for for summative reasons and I, I say unfortunate because um, I think teachers nowadays especially d don't use formal assessments for formative reasons. They get in the habit of, of only giving formal assessments like attitude surveys or, or, or quizzes or tests um, just as for summative reasons. And, and I say summative because we're, um, because it, we're talking about using the data just to evaluate the students. That is to 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 give them some type of score, identify wh where they're at, w with no eye on using the results to change, improve, or alter um, subsequent instructional experiences. And I can understand I can understand college faculty members um, focusing on assessments as being summative tools. Um, and I can even, to some degree, kind of forgive high school teachers for doing that um, exclusively, you know, where quizzes and tests are only part of, of managing uh, student grades and, and a general s evaluative statement of progress. Um, but it's really unfortunate that at younger grades, um, teachers do fall into the, the mindset that that is what assessment is going to be for them primarily, that they're going to, con to distribute and collect um, instrument data that is only used to help identify what kind of grade a student's going to get and not, and not use the data to help improve the instructional experiences them, themselves. Um, so I, I just wanted to to remind you that assessments are um, are, are given for um, formative and summative reasons, and just encourage you as professional educators um, to consider the many different uh, ways and the many different values of giving formal assessments um, for to help collect formative data, so that you can continue to improve to improve your instruction and your instructional practice. Now, getting to the topic for this week, um, validity. First of all, let's go back to, to next week, uh, to last week, excuse me. And last week's um, emphasis was on um, trying to identify the different ways that you can estimate the reliability or the consistency of results that you get when you implement assessments. 
and um, the information from the course um, identified and examined some of the different ways that reliability is estimated um, from the results that, that you collect. Well, th this week, the reason why this week is 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 so so important is that uh, the concept of, of validity um, relates to um, how valid or how uh, possibly true any inferences that, that you might make from the reliable data that you collect, um, how, 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 valid, how valid are any inferences that, that you make related to the educational variables of interest. So in, in other words, if you um, design and implement um, an assessment item or an assessment instrument that has a lot of items in it, and it could be an attitude survey and a, and a, a, a post-test, a quiz, or, or an exam of some sort. And you, um, you collect the, the data from those instruments, and you determine that the data, you can estimate that the reliability of the data is, is fairly good. Then, then how accurate are any inferences that you make about that data related to how much the students um, might have learned, um, how effective was the instruction, what kind, uh, in, in what ways did the experience affect the uh, learner attitudes? Some, so, so some r really important things uh, are associated with, with making inferences about the data that you collect. And so, and, and again, all you can do is make inferences about whether or not somebody has learned something or whether or not somebody's attitudes have been uh, affected or whether or not the instruction or parts of the instruction were effective or not effective. All of that um, are just those are just inferences you make based on the the data or the the, the observations that you that you make and, and collect. So um, that's why v validity is so important. And so th this week you're going to be presented with some information and some examples um, related to um, the different types of of validity that are generally identified in the field of assessment and evaluation. And also, um, you're going to be presented with some information and examples about, about what, what we call threats to validity. And that is, that is um, what are some things that might change or influence the, 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 the validity, uh, the validity, <laughs> excuse me, the validity or the truthfulness of any inferences that you might make about um, the, the reliable results that, that you collect. And so some of the, uh, th thre the threats re re refer to things that, that can happen that can actually um, um, minimize the validity of, of inferences th that you might make. So that's, it's pretty important and it's, I think it's absolutely fascinating myself, but again, that's um, the kind of person that I am. So sit back, relax, and, um, and um, scroll down. All the information and examples for this uh, week are, are located um, on this page. Yeah, so we done, we, we've done it a little differently than we did last week. Um, at least I, I did. <laughs> Put it all on one page instead of being in a, a big jumbo um, flash file. Um, so we'll see uh, if this arrangement makes makes any difference. Perhaps I'll need to collect some some data on this um, in some way to determine um, which way, if any, is is better to do this. So anyway, ho hope you enjoy this week. It's uh, it's a, another great reading from uh, from the author in the textbook, and we have a, a few associated notes in in the notes that you can can and should examine as you work your way through the topic of validity.